Ah, oh, West Coast Racers, as much fun as it is to make fun of the fact that it didn't even open to the public in its opening year, this is a great ride. I had the opportunity to go check this thing out about a month after it officially opened, and that's after watching this thing get built for about a full year. And I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised. While this ride did meet my expectations, you know, it felt the way I expected it would feel. There were certain things about it that I was not expecting that left me getting off saying, wow, that was really good fun. I think this is probably one of my new favorite coasters at Magic Mountain, which when they have 18 others, that's a big deal. So in this review, I'm going to discuss all of those in-depth thoughts and feelings I had while going through this layout so you know what to expect should you go out and ride this. Now, for those of you who might not have been to Magic Mountain, this coaster is located all the way in the back. It's in the former Cyclone Bay area over by Apocalypse. They've rethemed that entire section to the underground, and this is a complete 180 from that. This area is so much better than it used to be. And I'll even say, I think it looks better in person than it does on camera. The main pathway in that section looks like a road. You have various street signs, car-related theming around, and then, of course, West Coast Racers is that ride that is done in combination with West Coast Customs, famous for their vehicle designs. And they actually have one of their cars that they designed for Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas in the queue line. And that same design is what they incorporated into the front of the ride vehicles. Yes, West Coast Customs did do the front of these vehicles. Same kind of look, just shrunk down to fit the front of the train, and it looks fantastic. And once you enter that queue, you'll be able to see the noticeable theming. I'm going to guess most of you haven't been to the West Coast Customs garage in LA. Neither have I. However, the queue is done to kind of look like their shop. And it's pretty well done. This is by far one of the best themed rides in the park. I mean, this is an amusement park, so you don't exactly come here for world-class theming. But considering that a lot of the rides have very loose theming, this ride definitely has a solid theme. You know what you're going into when you enter the queue. So in that regard, they did a great job there. Now, this is a dueling coaster. However, it's in the same style as Twisted Colossus, where it's a Mobius. You board once, and you go around on both sides. I know there's going to be people that are going to walk up to this ride and say, okay, now where's the entrance to the other one? Well, I want to ride the yellow side. Where's the entrance to that? No, you get to ride both sides. You start out on the white, you end on the yellow, and it is a guaranteed race every time. And that is the big selling point with this coaster. A lot of people, including myself, were pretty disappointed in Twisted Colossus because it started off where you're getting a race almost every time. Now it rarely races. I haven't had a double duel on Twisted Colossus in years. West Coast Racers, you're getting that double duel every single time because they actually have the other train wait on the other side of the station and hold it until that next train is ready to dispatch, which I think is so smart. I wish they did that with Twisted Colossus because some of the times you're actually not even going to be waiting that long. I got five rides on West Coast Racers. I think only one of them, we were sitting there for a little bit that I was like, okay, it's kind of weird that's taking this long. Kind of interrupted the pacing, but there was one or two moments where we got in that pit stop. They did their little theming spiel and then we immediately took off and it left me surprised at how quickly we got through there. But hey, I would rather wait every single time if it meant a guaranteed duel. But let's break down each of these elements. So when you get in that vehicle, pull down your lap bar, there is a comfort collar like you'll find on some of the Skyrocket 2s. If you've ridden any of the Skyrocket 2s, the trains are very similar. They're very tight. Not exactly the easiest to get in and out of. And then the other thing you should note of is that you do board and exit on the same side of the vehicles, which does kind of create some congestion. So just be aware of that. But when you take off, you pull up to a stop, you have a train to your left on the yellow tracks, and then you take off on your first launch. Now this launch is not exactly anything to shout at. It's not really forceful by any means, but you don't really ride this coaster for the launches. It's just to kick things off. I highly doubt anyone will walk away from this ride saying, wow, I loved the launches. No, you're going to talk about the dueling. If there is a benefit to the launches is that it sends you straight into this high five, which is the best part of the ride. Guys, I was blown away at this element. Most of the ride felt exactly how I expected it to feel, but not the high five. It does not feel like Twisted Colossus's high five. You get some crazy ejector while you are hanging 90 degrees to the side. The ride is trying to throw you vertically up while you're hanging horizontally. And that is a very bizarre feeling. It's 
awesome. And the perks about it is that no matter which side of the train you sit on, the left or the right, you'll get to be on the upside of that high five on at least one of the tracks. But when it comes to the dueling, that is just the beginning. Yellow side dives under white side while white side goes into the first inversion. Each track has two inversions, making a total of four inversions. In this section right here where you have the white side upside down with the yellow side below, that's kind of reminiscent of Twisted Colossus's Top Gun stall. So if you're on the white side hanging upside down, tilt your head up and you'll be able to look under you at the other train. In fact, I encourage you on this ride to just pick out one or two people, whether they're friends of yours or not, and watch them as the ride course is going around because I can guarantee you it'll make the ride more fun. Sometimes I wasn't even paying attention to the ride that was going on around me because I was just watching my friends on the other train, which is fantastic. It makes the re-ride ability a lot higher. Following that element, both trains swerve to the right and drop down into the next launch. Now calling this a launch is a little bit deceiving because it's not your traditional launch. So this is a boost. In fact, I would even call it a jolt. You start off where you don't feel like you're accelerating and then you just get one second of a push. You speed up slightly and that sends you into an inversion. And these two inversions hang out right next to each other and it is such a fun moment. So while those second launches are a little weird, I would actually say I do like them just because it feels different than most launches you'll go through. And now you're entering the spaghetti bowl. Essentially here, you're banking to one side with the other track running either above or below you. So let's say you're banking to the left and you're on the top side where the other track is right below you. After you swerve and turn around, you'll then be on the bottom and the other track will be above you. So each side gets their opportunity to be in a different position. That part of West Coast Racers feels pretty similar on both sides. I actually did experience a grout during those moments. Those helixes are pretty forceful. I'd say that is by far the most forceful part of the ride. Yellow side goes into a small bunny hop and then into its second inversion, which ends up being the final inversion on the ride, by the way, while the white side pops up and swerves to the right underneath that inversion. If you're on the yellow side, you'll hit the brake run into the station. If you're on the white side, your track will turn yellow and you'll enter the pit stop. And that is the ride. It is so much fun. Like if I had to make a list of some of the most fun fun coasters I've ever ridden. This is probably one of them. It is very rewritable. I loved sticking friends on another train and then watching them during the ride, reaching your arms out, you try to high five, do whatever, of course you can't, but you certainly feel like you can. And that is what makes me want to just keep going over and over again. That's why I wrote it five times in a row. West Coast Racers in no way has the craziest airtime, though the high five does have some pretty decent airtime. It's by far not the most forceful, but it's just a very enjoyable enjoyable coaster. So in terms of putting it with the rest of Magic Mountain's coasters, X2 is still my favorite, followed by Twisted Colossus, even when it's not dueling, though it does make me angry a lot of the times. Then I would say West Coast Racers and Apocalypse, and then Tatsu at number five. I personally was not really expecting West Coast Racers to make my top three for favorite rides of Magic Mountain, but I think it's really good. I really enjoyed it. It's tough comparing it with any other ride other than Twisted Colossus just because it's so different from everything. Even Full Throttle, which is another premier ride launch coaster. This ride has very different elements than Full Throttle. Full Throttle, to a lot of people, feels very incomplete. This ride feels complete. You're very satisfied walking off this thing. So for West Coast Racers, final score, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. What would I do to make it better? Definitely make it a bit more forceful. And here's another idea. Take off the comfort collars. You don't need them. Full Throttle has the craziest hang time in the world, and that doesn't have comfort collars. I don't know what they were thinking there. But this is a very fun coaster. I highly recommend it. Go out to Six Flags Magic Mountain and check it out. So that's going to do it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've ridden this ride, be sure to let me know down in the comments below if you agree with my thoughts. If you disagree, let me know why. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and check out other coaster reviews on this channel. They're all organized in a playlist in alphabetical order. I've reviewed rides from all around the world, so be sure to go check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.